Okay, hey there everybody and welcome again to part 10 We're finally in double digits, we made it So yes, today we're going to be making a pickup gun And we're going to be transitioning to other things So yes First off, I want to start by showing you some changes I've made As you can see, I deleted the two enemies that were here And yes, that's just because since we're going to um, be transitioning between things I want to like inherit this thing and reuse it and stuff like that so I'm just going to show you how I'll do that but before I go to that the assignment I gave last time if you didn't do it it's just pretty much the pause menu um, over here the menu I just connected the signal and connected the same signal to this guy um, both of them are in this script which just unpauses the screen and change to the menu screen so yeah I think that was all that I needed to do and also here in the restart I just connected it to the same script and it just um, continue from this function so yeah first off um, I have my game here and as you can see everything here in the notary I think that I'll actually need in the next scene so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, create a new scene because um, I'm going to start with the level change system the, the timestamp to be in the description if you want to switch between any of the parts so um, go over to scene here and new inherited thing. So we're going to be inheriting this game thing. So we're going to open that, and here we are. As you can see, we have um, the elements that were in this game thing. And I'm just going to quickly save this as game one dot csn. Make sure you name it game one dot csn or level one dot csn. But just make sure that the one is there. And this is going to be necessary because when we're transitioning between things, we actually sorry between levels, we actually have to know the level we are in. So we're going to save that and if you notice if I go over to the game and for example I duplicate this guy now we have two enemies if I come back to game one we now have two enemies so it, every, every change I make to this thing is going to affect this um, scene and the rest of our game yeah so that's necessary because there are some things that I need in all the things at once and I will not have to go and start putting them one by one so I just want to inherit the game scene as you can see it comes back and the enemy is back. Um, since we need all this stuff, we don't have to really need to make, make any changes here. We can just duplicate. Oh, sorry, we cannot just duplicate. We have to add a um, instance more enemies if we want. Where is it? Enemy that's here, here. And we're just going to drag it over here, I guess. Control D. Um, another enemy. And I don't want them to have guns because I don't want guys shooting at me. So yes, I think I should be good. Then now I want a situation whereby when we enter here is when we are going to like change the thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to go back to my objects, and there is this thing I've already made and pre-made um, for this for the sake of this tutorial not being long, and it's just basically an area to the collision shape and a rectangle shape in it. So yes, um, I want to go back to collision shape, and of course I'm not seeing it really nicely. I want to just change the color there so that I can really um, tell the difference. So yes, I'm going to increase the size of this to have a considerable size. I'm going to save it, come back to our game scene. Make sure you go back to your game scene or your game one scene. And since we're going to be needing trigger area in basically every level, we just instance it here. So go over here, instance trigger area. Sorry, trigger. And CSCN, um, grab W on the keyboard move it somewhere around here so yeah um i have to scale this also so that it's going to cover everywhere so if you enter this spot um it's just going to trigger and we're going to change the thing i'll go over to trigger area trigger node we're going to add a script we're going to make it built in and we're going to be connecting the signal from the trigger but it entered down here this was just basic stuff i'm doing yes so uh, when we the only time we want to transition is when the player enters it. So we say if body the name is play, then we want to do some kind of weird stuff. So yeah, to keep track of our level and everything, we're gonna need another script and that'll be in the auto loads folder and I'm just gonna name um, new script, get a new script, right click new script. And I'm just gonna name this auto load the auto load, go over to projects, project settings, auto load to find that guy yeah. 
and I'm just going to change this to a small A because um, I'll be more convenient with that. So yes, we've added autoload as, um, as an autoloaded singleton. Um, if you don't know what that is, you can go back to the description or the card here. I'm going to show you a video where you see stuff about autoload. So yes, we'll go over to our autoload that we just made, the autoloaded script. And here we're just going to make a variable level and it's going to be equal to one by default so yeah obviously we're going to start with level one <laughs> so that's the reason why level is equal. if we go over back to the trigger area over here we're just going to call body dot next underscore and next so the player is going to be having a function called next level we go over back to the player and funk next and over here we're going to be transitioning to the next one. So I've already written this code before, so I'm just going to copy. As you can see, transition the transition to a levels um, to the levels game string level. Yes, yes, yes. So this level is actually meant to be auto loaded. Um, what basically what this is doing is just going to transition to this scene, and the scene is going to be game plus whatever auto load the level is. Make sure you stringify it so that you won't have any errors. And that's one of the reasons why we made this game one so that we can actually transition to game two or game one, um, depending on the level that it is. And since I've made this game one, I also want to go to the menu.csn and actually change this to game one so that we don't um, transition to the node game scene. Sorry, the inherit the parent game scene. That doesn't actually make sense. <laughs> so I'm going to go back to game one and hit run. Thing. as you can see i got my normal game and this is actually the game one scene because the game scene only has one um, enemy and yes when we enter the area we have an error what's this okay yes typographic error um sorry my bad next level instead so yep do that again i'm just gonna skip through all these running parts Wow, and as you can see, it turned black, and we are now in the new scene. So yes, what's the problem? Um, get rid the current scene. The add point. Okay, so the problem is very my bad. Maybe I just um removed this script by mistake. I just want to go back, load this up. I think that was my flaw. I'm gonna check it again. And as you can see, if I if I enter there, still my game one scene, and that's because we are not incrementing anything on the auto load. This value is just constant. The auto load the level value is just constant, so it just goes back to game one. So before we transition, we're meant to say auto load the level plus equals one. So that should be good, and I'm not going to be testing that out now because we already see that it works. In order to actually have um, a nice transition we have to have another game so we're going to hit plus scene new inherited scene and we're still going to inherit from this game scene so as you can see it came with everything plus our area and i'm just going to go ahead and quickly change this map so yes basically i'm done with um, our new map then we we'll go over to the trigger and we're just going to move this guy about here so that it overlaps nicely. Um, save this as game2.csen. I think we should be good. Just place enemies the way you want in your scene and we're good. Yes, since we're done with that, I want to tackle one bug that I noticed from the last video. And somebody on the comment section actually acknowledged that thank you. And how you're going to go around that is, um, what, what exactly the bug is it? If I go over here, um, all of them have guns. If I just run this thing quickly, um, I just make sure that they have guns. If I run this thing, if you notice that bullet that just flew from the middle of the scene, and the reason for that is when our enemy has a gun, the gun is going to move from police. Um, it's going to move from the game scene okay this node here it's going to move from here all the way to wherever the player is sorry to wherever the enemy is and the how to go around that is over here the ready in the enemy gun 
we're just gonna get rid of that set and stop level three. And over here in the process, we're gonna get rid of that. So, so yes, the reason um for that is before it was moving over from here to wherever the enemy is. So as it's passing, it's going to see us and it's going to shoot at us for some reason. Um, since we have gotten rid of that, um, the the gun is just going to stay where the enemy is. And um, why we actually put all this code in in the first place was to create that lag effect. But I don't think the enemy will need that lag effect, lag effect because it's always moving and it's actually going to just affect our game, um, the speed of our game in a way. So yes, that's how we're going around that. Um, um, I'm done with my game too soon, so we are, we are done with this, we're done with the trigger area, we're done with everything. So yes, the next thing we want to do in this tutorial was the enemy pickup gun, sorry, the player pickup gun. So we're going to make a new scene, and actually I think I've already done this, pickup gun.tsn. So yeah, this is basically just an area collision shape and sprite, so, and just know that I'm doing all this just to maximize time. Um, yes. So in the pickup gun, first off, I want to create that floating effect because now if you put it in your game, um, where is it in game one? I'm not going to put it in the game scene since if we pick it up in game one, we want this to be there in game two. Um, so I'm just going to instance it from here, pickup gun. Make sure you save this thing so that you can see this. And we're going to drag it, hit W, click and drag. And it, we're going to just place it somewhere here. So now for the pickup gun, um we're going to add a built-in script and create that we're adding a built-in script because we're not going to be using this so much in our code or sorry in our game to create that somehow um floating effect we go over back to the pickup gun and you guessed it right we're going to use an animation play so a new one and we're just going to name this float and we're going to go back to the sprite we're not going to be moving any other thing so we're gonna move this guy up a bit, um, key that in, use bizarre curves, um, take it down a bit, okay, key it in, and I'm gonna change this to 8.8 since my division is 0.4 and 0.4. Over here at the easing, I'm gonna take this down a bit, I'm gonna take this up a bit, and yes. Um, we're gonna check loop and check auto play. We'll check it again. As you can see, it has a kind of floating effect, so should I say bouncing effect. I can just quickly stop this and I want to go ahead and check it out. Um, check my easing for this one, for this node. Um, if you want to use my exact value, you can double click and yes, 0 0.35. So yes, um, sorry I didn't even tell you, the sprites for this will be available on GitHub. You can go there and download the full asset pack for this tutorial series. So in the script here, we're going to connect the signal, body enter, the get the right, <laughs> and yes. So also, it's just basically going to be like our um, target, oh, sorry, trigger area. So if player, sorry, if body, the name is player, then I just want to call body dot pick on the player. And anyways, since maybe you might have other things to pick up in your game um, I'm going to pass in a parameter as you can see to quotation marks and then the parameter is gone so we go back to the player and funk pick and here we just say item as the parameter so now we're going to be matching this item so um, basically what a match statement means is just like a switch statement or a multiple if statement so now I can say match item and um, put a semicolon after it. Then in here I can say gun. Yes. What essentially this what this um, what I just wrote now is doing is if item is gone, then do whatever is inside here. So you can be doing you can do this for others. Um, maybe you have another item, let's say power up. This will come up in another video. So you can say power up and pass in some code there. And now since we have only the gun. And put it there so now what essentially is doing is going to instance a gun var gun instance equals to gun dot instance gun instance the global position equal to global position make sure you don't lose this line because if you lose it your gun is going to be ended up dragging from here um to wherever the player is that would be messed so yes um a child gun instance 
Mm. As you can see, it's giving us an error. There's no gun yet. So what we're going to do is go back to the player. And as you can see, we, are, we still have our gun. And at the beginning of the game, we don't want to have the gun so that we, we can actually pick it up and it will work. So we're going to save as branch, save branch as scene. So we're going to right click on the gun and click save branch as scene. We're going to click uh, save gun.csdn in the object. So we're going to save that. When we save that, we can go ahead and delete it. And the reason why we saved it is so that, as, um, so that we can instance it here. So we're going to make another var gun and it's going to be equal to preload of the gun. And over here, the pickup gun, whenever we pick the gun, we want to QUE underscore free so that we can delete ourselves. I, I think that should be that should be all. That should be good. Mm, yeah, hit play on the game one scene. Make sure you don't get the game scene so that you won't get frustrated. <laughs> and as you can see it's having that nice floating effect which is crazy and i can click now and i'm not shooting and once i hit the gun i instance the gun there and boom everybody is more than sure. so yes that's really nice i like the way this tutorial is going before i forget as you can see in our game one when we pick up the gun we have the gun but if we go over to game two we don't have the gun in this case and it's not going to be instanced so what we're going to be doing is we'll go over back to the player to the player script and in here we're just going to add a ready function so we say funk underscore ready on the ready function we're going to be checking if we have um, picked up the gun or not so over here pick up gun when we touch the gun and we pick the gun i just want to add something else and it's going to be updating a variable here in auto load so we're going to make that variable var has underscore gun it's for our player not for our enemy and by default it's going to be false so that by default we don't have the gun we go over to pick up gun then here we want to say auto load dot has gun equals to true and we go over to the player and over here the ready we say if auto load dot has gun then we want to instance the gun right away I'm going to go down here, copy all this code, which you'll see, go up here, paste it here, um, copy this two, and indent left. So yes, this is going to instance a gun if we don't have a gun. Sorry, if we have a gun, if we have picked up the gun, and if we've not had a gun, um, we're just going to skip this and pass. Okay, so we're going to try this. We're going to hit play. We're going to run, pick up the gun shoot these guys now over here we're going to transition and now we still have a gun wow that's really nice and now we have more other people um, that are shooting at us and many weird stuff so yeah that's all for this tutorial i hope you liked it if you have any suggestions leave it down in the comment section below or go ahead to my discord and your suggestion there and i just want to say again that my patreon is out now and you can go ahead and support me thanks for watching see you guys next time smash subscribe and goodbye